Hello and welcome to the Biden King Stock Market Q&A livestream. We do this exclusively on my Discord. So if you want to join the Discord and ask some questions, be sure to click the link in the video description on joining this Discord. So Joe the Savage asked, any thoughts on Zora? So I've actually never heard of this. I'm going to take a look at this. Zora, ticker symbol Z-U-O. So this is a stock that just trades at $11.50 a share. Market cap of $1.3 billion. I Still have no idea what this company does, so we'll take a look at the company profile. Zora Inc. provides cloud-based software on a subscription basis that enables companies in various industries to launch, manage, and transfer into a subscription business. The company offers Zora Central Platform that acts as an intelligent subscription. Okay, customers to orient. Yeah. Okay, so they assist businesses in getting into this whole subscription-based model that a whole bunch of companies are getting into like a Netflix, Disney Plus, Apple with the App Store and Apple services like iCloud, Apple Music. I don't know if they're an industry leader, what kind of market share they hold in their industry. I'm not sure. What I can do is look into their financials and what I see here is the past few earnings results, the past four, they have just dominated expectations. A year ago they were estimated to lose 14 cents a share. They only lost 9 cents a share. And have they been profitable yet? Uh, that's a negative. No profitability yet, but they are beating on e on loss per share estimates. So they're reporting less losses than anticipated. Uh, we'll see what comes with their next earnings. So as we can see here, we've got the same thing that we've got with a lot of startups. We've got revenue rising and profits not looking so hot, but it's okay. Once you got revenue, you figure out how to cut expenses, how to maximize profits and then you're golden but uh, first the company has to stay alive so we've got to see if this company can stay alive and to see that we're gonna check its balance sheet first and foremost we'll look at the income statement just to see what kind of revenues are pulling in so for 20 oh that's okay so year-end 2019 pretty much they produced 276 million dollars in revenue which is just total sales and then uh, in 2018 they made 235 million and it looks like yeah like I said they've been on an upgrow uh, an upward trend and it looks like this year they're expected to beat these uh, last year's revenues as well which is great everything's going more online everything's going towards the subscription model so I'm assuming that they'll do great and as we can see over time starting back here in year end 2016 net income was a loss of 40 million and then it grew next the other year to 40, a loss of 47 million and then it grew to a loss of 77 million and now this past year they grew to a loss of 83 million now they are on pace to lose more money this year than they did last year and all those other years also that's just the the perks of being a startup total cash on hand they're sitting on 171 million dollars of cash on hand total current assets so this is anything like short-term investments or anything that can be liquidated quickly it doesn't have to exactly be cash but anything that can be sold quickly or you can get your money back very quickly not like buildings or stuff like that because that's stuff that could be on the market for months or years total current assets comes in at 266 million which is a good look for a company with a market cap of 1.3 billion it's always good to have lots of short-term assets right there total assets come in at 400 million so nearly half of their market cap, or I should say one-third of their market cap is total assets so that's a healthy thing that I like to see in companies and it's not something that you see in every company um, not every company has that strong of assets on their balance sheet so let's take a look at total current liabilities so these are debts or anything that's costing the company money uh, comes in at 165 million which is okay so it's less than total current assets so that's good their current ratio is positive is above a one and then total liabilities combined is 237 million which is I want yeah so it's less than half of total assets meaning it gives them an asset to debt ratio of less than a two but it's still between a one and a two which I think is healthy anything above a one is a healthy asset to debt ratio anything above a two is pretty dang good and you should feel plenty comfortable that you don't have to worry about anything in that case you can spend all your money to pay for all your liabilities and still have 
um, a decent amount of cash left over. And it, if you got above a three asset to debt ratio, then that's even better. That's phenomenal. Okay, so this is a company that's got a solid balance sheet. It's been growing revenues pretty consistently, pretty attractively over the past, um, from 2017 through 2019, they doubled revenues, which is just beautiful, but they also doubled their losses. But like I said, those are just the perks of being what I assume this company is, is a startup. But if they're not a startup, then this is pretty ugly. Let's take a look how long they've been around. Okay, they've been around on the stock market. I check out their max chart and it gives me a chart that starts in 2018. So I'm assuming they haven't been on the stock market for that long. The stock price has continually gone down, but that's not a big deal. If they really are for the long term and they plan on turning these revenues into future profits and this is a solid looking company I'm assuming and I hope they don't pay a dividend yeah okay they're not paying a dividend that's good they're not making any money they're not making profits so every share you buy you're losing 70 cents so that is Zora stock Z U O and those are my thoughts on it holy do you know what happened with Nikola just got on Yahoo and it's the number one trending right now up 25% on the day why can we never escape this stock <laughs> oh man I've been watching Nikola since it was BTIQ and a lot of people were recommending this stock and I thought it was done with it after the merger but apparently it's still got a lot of hype we're taking a look at Nikola right now at $45 a share up 20 two and a half percent today pretty pretty ridiculous let's take a look at some headlines here see what's going on with Nikola Tesla has raised close to 200 to 20 billion Nikola founder says it won't have to raise as much money Nikola stocks shoots higher because companies might actually want what it's selling okay let's go more in depth okay, Nikola announced an order for 2,500 battery powered trucks from Waste Hauler Republic Services. Investors are finally getting the news that they wanted to hear when earnings were announced. Does this mean that these pre orders okay, announced an order again, pre order because these vehicles don't exist yet? Is there a deposit on this? Okay, for the sake of for the lack of finding any news on this, I'm going to assume that there's no deposits because I would imagine that would be a huge breakthrough for the stock actually producing some sales. So we know the news on Nikola. Let's take a look at the stock and see if anything's fundamentally changed or what I if I can find a buy price on this thing. Right, so Nikola is currently trading at a market cap of $17 billion. Okay, this future, this company might have a bright future in front of it, but here's the thing. They have, and let me just show proof, they have zero dollars in revenue, essentially. Uh, this past, past year, they produced half a million dollars in revenue, but come on guys, half a million in revenues, and you're valuing this company at 17 billion dollars? Like, come on. Um, I, I used to think Tesla was overvalued, but when you take a look at Nikola, like, let's go take a look at, okay, this is going to baffle you guys. I like companies that have a price to sales ratio of anywhere from a 5 to a 10. Anything above a 10 is a little bit rich for me, but if a company trades between uh, that price to sales ratio between a 5 and 10, then it's all good. I, I trust that the profits will eventually get there and the PE ratio will reason out and stuff like that. But I have a feeling that Nikola is going to have a higher price to sales ratio than uh than a 5 to 10 price to sales in it and a you know I bet they don't have a number that's big enough for that but it's okay because we can do that on on our own all we have to do is take the market value of the company which is 17 billion we'll do 17 1 2 3 1 2 3 one two three that's 17 billion and then what you do is you divide this by their amount of revenue this past year in 2019 and that will give us their price to sales ratio so 482,000 divided by 482 one two three and we get a number of 35,269 times price to sales ratio if you were to put $35,269 into the stock only one dollar of that purchase goes towards the revenue that they produced so it's just like saying um, some kids got a lemonade stand and they said I made one dollar last year at my lemonade stand would you pay thirty five thousand dollars for my company 
no thanks. Maybe not right now. Maybe once you show that you can increase those sales and maybe start making a profit eventually. But as of right now, nickel is not a stock that attracts me. Uh, this this stock price cannot go any higher if I'm going to keep my sanity. If I was in, but like I I don't care about Nikola. It's a stock that I don't look at religiously, but um, I couldn't recommend this stock to anybody. That is just it's too expensive, way too expensive. So if a company has negative EPS, could that be a good thing? It depends. All it means is that it's it's not producing any profits. It's losing money as a company. So if I if I started a lemonade stand, and I said I made twenty dollars but the stand costed me a hundred dollars to make I didn't really make profits because I lost money to start this business and I have to pretty much pay myself back pay back people that gave me money anything like that I'm not profitable as a business yet so if you're if you're holding the stock for the long term and you believe that they will eventually be profitable then it's not a horrible thing um, I hold a couple stocks at least with negative EPS in snapchat and FUV is obviously negative EPS and for the time being Carnival Cruise Lines is also not profitable because obviously they're not sailing during the coronavirus so it's not a horrible thing just know what you're investing in <laughs> it, it's typically not a company that a value investor would invest in growth investors really have no problem touching the space with uh, stocks that have negative EPS so if you guys don't know there is a channel in the discord that's called sales portfolio and you guys have direct access to this portfolio you're seeing on my screen right now this is just a watch list but if you guys click on the portfolio tab down here you actually get a full view of my um, automated portfolio so I created all this <laughs> from coding in Google Sheets and I created graphs for you guys it always stays up to date within uh, five minutes of refreshing so uh, it's just something that I thought I could get back to the Discord for you guys to be able to track my portfolio as often as, as I take a look at it, and you guys can see right down to, to the minutes as to what my portfolio is valued at. You guys can see over here. This is how much money I put into each stock. So Facebook here, I put 13 grand into it. Apple, I've only put nine thousand dollars into. But this graph shows how much that position is now valued at. So Facebook, I put 13 grand in it it's now valued at twenty thousand dollars Apple I put nine thousand seven hundred in it it's valued at twenty three thousand um, dollars and you guys can also see here if you're not a fan of the pie chart you guys can see this graph over here these colored bars represent how much capital I put into the stock and the green above it or the green below it represent my profit or loss on that position and this is my portfolio growth over time you guys can see I'm above fifty grand right now uh, what is your bright price on CCL? Let me see. Yeah, CCL trading at $15.32 a share. So this is a company I already own 190 shares of. I'm not looking to dip my toes into any more shares of this company. Something you guys should know is that I bought Carnival Cruise Lines back in late February. This is when I bought my first shares. And this is before COVID was a worldwide thing. This was something that was only happening in China and we thought it would just blow over. At the time, Carnival was also paying a dividend of around uh, a 5 to 7% dividend yield and a payout ratio of nearly 50%. So it, it just looked like a dream come true. Like, oh, I just put my money in the ships. I let people do their cruising. I let people spend money on their cruises and stuff. And I just sit back and collect the profits. And that business model still sounds very attractive to me. But the world has changed since then. We, we don't have cruises right now. People aren't spending money on ships. Uh, Carnival Cruise Lines has over 100 ships right now that have to be maintenance and, and none of them are producing them any revenue. So this is a totally different company than it was when I started investing in it and I bought as high as $31 a share and as low as $8 a share. And collectively uh, I have 190 shares in Carnival Cruise Lines as we can see over here so yeah I have 190 shares my cost per share average cost per share is twenty four dollars and thirty two cents I have four thousand six hundred dollars in the stock and um, yeah so I also own point zero 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 three two percent of the company I, I like this little metric I don't know why so yeah Carnival Cruise Lines has a market cap of twelve billion and here's a great thing okay so if we take a look at their financials and we look at the balance sheet 
Well, first off, we can look at the income statement, and I'm just going to show you guys something. So back in 2019, the entire year, they produced $21 billion in revenue. And you saw that their market cap, which is pretty much the net worth of the company, is only at $12 billion. So you're like, how is a company that's making $20 billion in revenues only worth $12 billion? But yet again, they're not making any money right now. People see it as a risky investment. They could possibly go bankrupt. We're not sure what the likelihood of that is, but um, so far cruises are canceled till the end of October. Supposedly or allegedly, they might start up again in November, but we'll see who still wants to be taking a cruise in winter in the United States. You know, so I want to show you guys the balance sheet here. So total cash on hand, half a billion dollars for this company. Total current assets, two billion dollars, and total assets combined, we're sitting pretty at forty-five billion dollars. So, you have a company that has assets that are worth $45 billion, right? So, that's, that's in ships, that's in um, stocks, that's in cash, that's everything combined, anything that they could sell that's worth money and that's making money for them is $45 billion. And you're telling me that this stock is only worth $12 billion? I get that there's a lot of fear in the world right now. But once this all blows over and Carnival Cruise Line starts sailing again, I believe that they'll have the funds sufficient enough to survive all this. I don't believe that Carnival Cruise Lines is going to go bankrupt. I don't think investors are going to let Carnival Cruise Lines go bankrupt. Uh, Carnival and the cruise in industry in general makes up a huge amount of work workforce. Hotel rooms where people are flying to get a hotel room and then go on the cruise the next day. Also, resorts rely on them. Taxi drivers rely on them. Uber restaurants the whole tourism industry is associated with the cruising industry and as we can see revenues have been consistently up over the past four years net income has been consistently up over the past four years it's a solid company but 2020 just came in and and just smacked this stock so and we look at total liabilities of only 20 billion dollars so even if you were to subtract all these liabilities from their total assets you're still left with um, twice as much assets so that's an asset to debt ratio of a 2x for carnival cruise lines it's a very healthy balance sheet it's just unfortunate that they're put in this position right now so that being said if you're willing to hold carnival cruise lines for the long term like i am 15 dollars is a fine enough price to be paying for carnival cruise lines but also remember that you are taking the risk that this company could potentially go bankrupt we have no idea what's going what's going to happen in 2021 um, if they'll ever sail again, if they're going to have to sell off a mass amount of their ships. But Carnival Cruise Lines is still a fine company in my portfolio. What's your biggest regret in the market? Um, I've made enough mistakes where I don't regret really much. But I will tell you guys this story of my first investment. It's probably my biggest uh, mistake because I broke the golden my own golden rule <laughs> in saying... Do not make an emotional decision. Do not panic sell on um, on fear. Oh, what happened here? Where's where's match group? Is this not match? Hold up. Did they sell? Match group. Okay. So this is match group. Wow, $114 a share. And I know why, too. So match group is a is the owner of match.com tinder i believe okcupid as well and maybe some other dating apps like that so back in 2016 literally the day i learned about investing it may have been the day i found out investing from my college professor my english professor that introduced me to the market or the day after i started researching and i was wondering okay well uh people are talking about this match stock looks a little undervalued they're saying and and i believe that the future of dating was going to be like people finding people online on apps and stuff like that it's just so convenient to do it that way and th but they were saying don't buy this stock their ceo is leaving it's uncertain what's going to happen for match and this is a stock that was trading at seventeen dollars and sixty cents a share i remember that because i never forget this lesson that i learned from it so i own this stock for maybe two hours tops tops uh and it dropped three cents it went from seventeen dollars and sixty cents to seventeen dollars and fifty seven cents and i panicked i don't know why but i freaked out 
as if I've never spent $17 on anything before. Like, a lot of people don't realize, you spend $17 on a night at McDonald's all the time, or you buy a toy for, for your kid, or for your dog, but you spend $17 all the time, and you never get that money back, but you don't freak out about it. In the stock market, why is it so difficult? We can either make money, or we lose that $17. It's not a huge risk, but for some reason, I freaked out and I, I talked myself out of this investment and I sold when the stock went down three cents a share. And that was in December 2016, right? So if we go back five years, we can even find where I had bought at. December 2016, you guys can see the stock was trading around $17 a share. Well, within two years, the stock was already up to 80 ninety dollars a share um, two years three years uh, somewhere around there so that's one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made <laughs> I don't regret it too much because I bought one share so I went from seventeen dollars to ninety dollars a share now it's a hundred fourteen dollars a share but um, that is easily what what is that one hundred so that's a six x on my investment had I held on to it but um, it's it's a good lesson for me to learn you know so that's that what about Disney yeah so the stock is at $120 a share market cap at 232 billion right there um, is it a fair buy for the profits that they're producing right now I say hell no and the reason why is we take a look at their statistics we take a look at the forward P.E. ratio, we're looking at a 50 times P.E. ratio. What's Disney? The next Tesla? The next Amazon? I don't think so. It's definitely got growth coming from the streaming sector as Disney Plus just hit 60 million subscribers worldwide when they were projected to hit that number by 2024 and they hit it in under a year. That's ridiculous. And, and across all the streaming platforms they have 100 million subscribers, so Hulu, ESPN Plus, and Disney Plus. 100 million across the board right there so it's it's looking positive for Disney in the long run but right now parks still aren't producing incredible revenues theaters aren't producing great revenues we're gonna see what goes on with Mulan and them testing it uh, by selling it on Disney Plus for thirty dollars I'm not buying Disney right now at a fifty times forward PE ratio but um it's definitely a stock that I hold fifty shares of Disney I don't know if you guys know this I love Disney Disney, I will I will ride this company till the day I die, and I'm not even kidding. This is a stock that I will hold for the next hundred years or however much longer I live. I don't know if I'll ever sell it or just collect dividends, but I love the Walt Disney Company very much. This is not a price point that I would be buying in at. I'm not saying that the stock will ever dip, but it's just it's too pricey for me, and it's easier for me to see a correction in this stock than it is for me to see returns to 140 and 150 dollars a share again well, that's the live stream guys thank you for tuning in we ran about eight minutes longer than we we're supposed to but that's great because we had uh, great questions thank you guys for tuning in for asking those questions um, I, I really look forward to these guys we'll do the live stream again on friday have a beautiful day